Thank you for having me today. Uh, yes, my name is Evgenia Nosek. Uh, I'm a PhD student in the University of Grenoble Alp. And uh, today I'll be talking about how DNS packets get intercepted and injected in the wild. So just to very briefly recall how DNS resolution would usually look like, it's a very simplified example, but uh, the important part is uh, when the end client wants to resolve the domain name, uh, its recursive resolver is going to contact the root name server, the TLD name server, and finally the example.com name server. And uh, the last one here is going to provide the response, which is sent back to the client. And the important part in the previous uh, figure is that uh, when such a query is sent to the root server, uh, we're not expecting to get the final response here. Uh, root servers are not authoritative for example.com or for any other second level domain name. So the only thing we expect to see is uh, a bunch of uh, referrals and glue records. Uh, but then something interesting happened two years ago. <clears throat> it was reported by my engineers uh, that uh, clients in Mexico would have problems reaching the WhatsApp.net domain. And then after some initial troubleshooting, it turned out that uh, even more domain names were affected. And there was some anomaly when uh, contacting the key root server. Uh, so then the very same problem was reproduced by meta engineers using the RIP Atlas infrastructure. And uh, what it looked like is that uh, we have the RIP Atlas probe on the left, located in Mexico. And then this probe was requested to resolve uh, one subdomain under Facebook.com. Uh, this query was sent uh, to the K root server directly, non-recursively. And then surprisingly enough, uh, the RIP Atlas probe got the response. So here there are two problems. Uh, the first one is that the K-Root server was not, is not authoritative for neither Facebook.com or any other uh, second-level domain. Uh, the second problem here is that uh, the A record returned is actually bogus because this IP address does not belong to Facebook, but uh, rather to Twitter. So then to go further into the troubleshooting, uh, there was issued the ID.server uh, chaos class txt query, uh, for the k-root uh, to see uh, which any cast instance was reached uh, from that RIP Atlas probe. And it turned out that uh, the RIP Atlas probes, um, uh, its queries were routed to the uh, k-root server located in Guangzhou in China. Uh, so this is a third problem here because uh, this uh, root server instance is uh, local and it is not supposed to propagate uh, roughly beyond the Chinese borders. Uh, so then <clears throat> there was a comment from the key root server operator that uh, there indeed happened a route leak and the, instance, the local root server instance was reachable from the outside. And of course it was confirmed that uh, the key root is not serving uh, any bogus data and there must have been some middle boxes that were injecting responses uh, between the end client and the key root. Uh, so the first question we wanted to answer is uh, whether that leak was a one-time event or the instance would be reachable from the outside uh, quite some time before. So to answer this question, we relied on the uh, RIP Atlas infrastructure. And in particular, there is this one uh, built-in measurement uh, that is run on all the uh, connected RIP Atlas probe. And the idea of the measurement is to send the chaos class txt query for ID.server to the k root. And uh, the response gives uh, the uh, identifier of the Anycast instance reached. Uh, so we analyzed uh, the measurements for all the probes uh, two months before the leak was reported and nine months after. And then what we noticed is that uh, at least two months before being reported, uh, the instance was already reachable from the outside. Uh, we saw it uh, was reachable from 57 probes in 15 countries. And then even after that particular leak was fixed, the instance would uh, still occasionally uh, leak to the outside world. Uh, but that time it was over IPv6 and it was reachable from much uh, less uh, RAP Atlas probes. So then the second question we wanted to answer was slightly more broad. And this time we were wondering uh, what ratio of RAP Atlas probes uh, they experience response injection uh, when contacting with DNS root servers. So to answer the second question, we once again relied on the RAP Atlas infrastructure, uh, but this time we have set up our own custom measurements. So the idea was to request um, every connected RIP Atlas probe to send a bunch of DNS queries to all the root server letters over both IP protocols, both transport protocols, and we were requesting the A and code records of Google, Facebook, and RIP uh, domain names. Once again, with this setup, we're not expecting to get the response because root servers are not authoritative for any of those domain names. Uh, so finally, we have run this measurements during nine months in 2022. And we had more than 1 billion measurements to analyze at the end. 
So then when taking a look at those measurements, uh, we have very roughly divided them into two categories. Uh, the first one is measurements with uh, non-injected responses, meaning that uh, uh, this is expected behavior because we do not uh, expect to see responses for our requests uh, from root servers. Uh, now, the second group is uh, it's only less than 1%, uh, but in those cases, Stripe Atlas Pros would get uh, some kind of uh, responses to our requests. So, then take a look at those. Uh, we, had, uh, we received five types of responses in total. Uh, the most common response type received was A type. And the uh, RIPE Atlas probes uh, would receive more than 2,000 unique IP addresses uh, as A records. Uh, and the interesting thing, thing here is that uh, the majority of uh, uh, returned responses were actually valid. So it was the case for 50% of Facebook queries and 90% of Google queries, even though those responses were not uh, expected to be, <coughs> to be received. Now we see quite similar trends for the quote response type, which was the second most popular one. And here the ratio of uh, injected response uh, of correct responses sorry was even higher, almost 65% for Facebook and 99% for Google.com requests. Uh, then finally, we uh, received the URI type uh, responses on some probes uh, from Iran. Uh, so those uh, those responses were triggered by the Facebook.com and Google.com domain names. And uh, if anyone here has uh, has an idea what those mean exactly, I would be very happy to hear. And then finally, there was uh, one rep atlas probe that received the SA response type uh, uh, when requesting the Facebook.com domain name. And it looks like it was generated by the DNS filtering service. And uh, finally, some probes would receive the um, a bunch of C names uh, that were all pointing uh, google.com to force safe search google.com. Uh, so as we received those injected responses, we were also wondering uh, which, uh, which DNS entity was generating them. So uh, when analyzing the injected responses, we also extracted the NSAD strings. And uh, not surprisingly, none of those NSAD strings belonged to DNS root servers. So it's not the root servers that generated those responses. Uh, the great majority were empty, so we couldn't um, we couldn't uh, map NSAD strings to originators. And we also saw a bunch of filtering services, unclassified strings, and public resolvers. So in the last case, we believe to have encountered uh, transparent forwarders uh, that would intersect, uh, intercept all the queries coming from web atlas probes and then relay them to public resolvers. Uh, speaking about the persistence of manipulation, it remains rather stable during uh, all the nine months of the experiment. So uh, it was always less than 1% uh, of uh, measurements affected, and between 3 and 4.5% and of uh, RIPE Atlas probes would experience uh, response injection. So if we think about countermeasures, uh, one thing that was proposed by researchers is um, uh, when announcing any cast prefixes, uh, one could include some geographical hints, so the destination networks um, would uh, choose uh, those anycast instances that are um, uh, that are nearby. Uh, the second thing was proposed to do QNA minimization because, uh, in that case, in Mexico, strictly speaking, it wasn't necessary to send the full request to the root server, and just the .NET would be enough. Uh, finally, one can do encrypted DNS to prevent somebody from sniffing on DNS traffic. But uh, it is not yet widely deployed between uh, recursive resolvers and authoritative name servers. And finally, one could rely on DNSSEC, uh, but it means that uh, recursive resolvers have to do DNSSEC validation and uh, domain names itself have to be signed. So to summarize, uh, what we have just seen is that uh, in total, uh, more than 7% of prior plus probes participated. Uh, they experience response injection when contacting uh, DNS root servers directly. Uh, what we have also seen is that injected data is not always bogus. So in this case, this kind of uh, DNS manipulation would stay completely transparent to end users. Uh, what's more concerning here is that uh, this kind of DNS filtering can propagate uh, beyond its intended scope, and it can affect clients from other networks. And this is something we have seen uh, <clears throat> when there was a KO uh, leak uh, that affected the clients in Mexico. Uh, that's all I wanted to talk about today, and now I'll be happy to take your questions. Hi, Ray Bellis from ISC. I run Fruit. Um, have you looked at um, 
sort of queries that um, just for the second levels, more specifically, because my experience of these redirections or interceptions is that they're actually applying to all DNS traffic. And I don't think that came through in your presentation, but this is not actually interception specifically aimed at the root servers. You know, you've got particular large statewide firewalls. They are looking at all DNS traffic and the fact that it's the root is almost incidental. Yes, I believe that um, <clears throat> ideally we would run measurements not only to the root servers, but also to other DNS destinations. And then if we see that all the traffic is intercepted, then of course it's not uh, only the root servers that are affected. Um, I don't know if there are cases when uh, only traffic to root service will be accepted, uh, intercepted. I'm not aware of that. Did you look at DNSSEC responses as well? No, we didn't uh, take a look at DNSSEC responses. Thank you very much. Thank you.